I bring you greetings on behalf of the Troop County School System. My name is Tina Duckett and I am the Public Relations Director and you are watching Spotlight on Education. This program is designed to bring you information about our school system, our students, our staff, and our wonderful accomplishments. Today in the studio with me is the principal of Gardner Newman Middle School, Miss Ann Cook. Thank you for being here today. Thank you, Tina. Nice to be here. And I know that our audience will learn so much more about Gardner Newman Middle School and what it takes to become a principal <laughs> at Gardner Newman Middle School, or I should say, how to lead middle school students. Mm -hmm. And so having said that, before we venture into all of the programmatic pieces of the school and what's taking place, tell us a little bit about Ann Cook and her journey into education. Okay, I'll be glad to. I taught for, for 17 years before becoming a, an uh, instructional specialist at Ethel Kite Magnet School and from there I became principal. So I was principal at Ethel Kite for about 13 years and now I'm at Gardner Newman Middle School and glad to be here. I started my education at LaGrange College and uh, after I received my undergraduate degree from LaGrange College my family moved to Bibb County and I taught in Peach County, which is Byron, Georgia, was the actual town, for a couple of years. And I taught in um, uh, Macon for eight years. I loved that experience in Bibb County, a nice large school system. Mm -hmm. I taught at a math science technology magnet school called Alexander II. And it was right across the street from Mercer University. So we had a lot of really wonderful opportunities to uh, let the students explore the college life as well as learn about math, science, and technology and all of the other things at Alexander too. Then we did it, we spent a year in Mississippi before moving back to LaGrange and I uh, was happy to re return to Troop County School System and joined the Mountville Elementary staff for two years before going to Ethel Kite. Oh, so I've spent a good while teaching, many years teaching, 17 years and another 15 years as an administrator. And what was your certification in in teaching? Uh, middle subject? school, middle grades, education. Oh, okay. And I've received a master's degree from uh, Mercer University, a specialist in education degree also from Mercer University, and then an educational leadership degree from West Georgia, University of West, West Georgia. Georgia in Carrollton. Oh, good, yeah. good. Well, thank you for sharing that. Well, tell us about the, the wonderful staff that supports the operations at your school? Um, we do have a wonderful staff of 75 teachers and I'll tell you a little bit about them. Of those 75 certified staff te uh, members, 100% are highly qualified. Mm. In Troop County, in order to hire, a teacher must be highly qualified, meaning that she has completed all requirements to become a certified teacher. And we also look for teachers that have advanced degrees and we do have 49% uh, of our teachers hold a master's degree, 31% have a specialist degree, which is a six-year degree, and 1% of our staff has a doctorate. And uh, all, all teachers, of course, have a bachelor's degree in education. Yes. Okay. Of the faculty, 29% is minority and 21% is male, which is somewhat unusual in this small town to have that many <laughs> male teachers. And of course we have one principal and three assistant principals, one for sixth grade, one for seventh grade, and one for eighth grade. And who are those uh, assistant principals? Will you share their names? I'll be glad to. Our sixth grade assistant principal and registrar is Ava Matters. Okay. Our seventh grade assistant principal and testing coordinator is Tammy Glenn. And our eighth grade assistant principal and operations manager is Chris Williams. Okay. Good. Very nice and very strong staff. Good, and that's important. Very. So how many students are enrolled this year? Well, at Gardner Newman this year, we have almost 1,100 students. Wow. And our feeder schools um, are Hollis Hand, Ethel Kite, Franklin Forest, uh, Unity, and Hillcrest. Okay. So we have a large number of students. Um, the enrollment for sixth grade right now is 369 students. The enrollment for seventh grade is 371 students, and the enrollment in eighth grade is 346 students. So each grade is almost as large as a regular elementary school. 
Mm, this is this is true. Is eleven hundred students? Is that a fairly large? You, you said you were in Bibb County. I'm just asking whether or not uh, Garner Newman would be considered a large middle school. I, I think it would be considered a large middle school. Okay. Yes, I, I believe it would. Okay. Let me tell you a little bit about the students. Okay. Uh, sure. Of those students, forty-seven percent are white. Mm -hmm. uh, Forty-four percent are black. Three percent are Hispanic, and two percent are Asian. Um, so we have a, quite a mix of students, and 20% are identified as gifted students. Oh, good, good. That is a large number, isn't it? Yes, it is. Oh, yes. It is a large number of gifted students. And um, so what is the school's mission? Um, the school's mission, we, our school council just uh, finished working with the staff in developing the school's mission statement. As, as you know, we, our school system just completed the advanced ed program. Yes. So that's and tell our viewers what the advanced ed program is all about. <laughs> it's a five-year certification, um, and every school in the school system must be certified or accredited yes. in order for the school system to be accredited. Yes. So fortunately, our school system did become accredited. and. Um, in, in working on our work for accreditation, we decided to um, re revisit the school's mission statement. And okay. so our school's mission statement is, the mission of Gardner Newman Middle School is to meet students' needs by providing quality educational and personal growth opportunities, ensuring success in our ever-changing world. Mm. We felt that that's really the global mission of our school. Okay, and I know that it's in alignment with the system's mission. That's correct. Okay, so now tell us what uh, some of the goals are for your school that you and your staff hope to accomplish this school year. Okay, we have a lot of goals. Of course, the primary goal of any school is to ensure student success, uh, particularly at the academic level. Um, and our school has good solid scores because we have good, solid, strong teachers. Okay. For example, on last year's CRCT, 96% of our students passed reading, 94% of our students passed English language arts, and 83% of our students passed math, which included 94% of our seventh graders passing math. So we're proud of those scores, and we want to keep up that tradition. This year will be a benchmark year for the national standards that our school system is using. As you know, Georgia, has adopted the national standards. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so uh, those are more rigorous. The Common Core. The Common Core curriculum. Yes. And they are more rigorous. Mm -hmm. And so we're um, trying to meet the, uh, the, the goals of that uh, new national standard. And it's not easy, but we're, we're working hard to do it. In addition to our goal of student achievement, we want to improve student, I mean, uh, communication with parents and the community. Mm -hmm. And toward that end, Garden Newman Middle School um, has started a group email with parents whereby I send out daily, or usually daily, <laughs> communication to parents about the uh, things that are going on at Garden Newman Middle School. And any parent that is interested in uh, uh, being included in that daily email can simply call the school and ask me to add them to the parent email group. Okay. In addition to that, uh, we do have a very active web page where we try to keep it updated. We have a marquee in front of the school. Mm -hmm. uh, we've improved the signage at the school so that it's easier for parents and teachers and students and uh, stakeholders to know where to go once they get on campus because it is a large school. And we also have other stakeholders besides parents that we uh, stay in close contact with, including are some of our business partners, or mm -hmm. all of our business partners, and some of those are ExxonMobil. And we just found out we received a grant yes. from ExxonMobil. Okay, good, congratulations. Thank <laughs> you. Diverse Power. Uh, Diverse Power is very helpful to our school, and mm -hmm. we're going to request a grant for a Promethean Board from Diverse Power this year for one of our math classes. And um, Kia is another business partner of Garden Newman Middle School. So there are many business partners that also help our school and we feel that it's very important to try to promote those businesses and hope that they promote us as well. Sure. And I would say that our third goal is to build a sense of community in each classroom. Mm. When you have a large school that is comprised of 
five elementary schools and people from all over the county. It's important to try to build a sense of community. And there's a saying that you've probably heard that says, a child doesn't care how much you know until he knows how much you care. Yes. Well, we take that to heart. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, I, the teachers at Gardner Newman Middle School take that to heart. So in every classroom, we really try to build a sense of community in the classroom where there's a good rapport, a good relationship between the teacher and the students. And whenever we find that there's a breakdown in that area, we try to do something to try to amend that and try to ensure that the student feels that that is really their classroom, that is really their place at Gardner Newman Middle School. Well, I know that you have uh, numerous uh, programs and opportunities for students to engage in extracurricular activities. Would you care to share some of those? I would. I would like to. Um, we do have a number of extracurricular activities at Gardner Newman Middle School. So when students leave the elementary schools, I think that they'll really get excited about the many and numerous and various extracurricular activities that our school has to offer. For example, we have sports such as football, soccer, basketball, volleyball, uh, wrestling, track and field, competition, cheer, and pep squad, uh, among others. We also have some academic and other extracurricular activities such as the Junior Beta Club, Service Club, Book Club, Step Team, Drama and Chorus, Black History Club, Academic Bowl, Yearbook, Robotics, Science Club, wow. Art Club, <laughs> and Chorus. This is a healthy list, isn't it? It is, <laughs> and I, we have some uh, accolades and successes I would like to share as well. Please do. You've brought some items with I you I brought today. some items that I'd like to share, and I'd like to also tell you a little bit about some of our sports um, successes this year. Okay. This is not... This was not by a club, but our science classes uh, in seventh grade have been doing some dissecting. And one of the things that they recently dissected was an owl, uh, an owl pellet. For those of you who don't know, <laughs> owls eat rodents such as mice and moles and um, rats. Here's a rat. <laughs> and when they, after they eat it, they regurgitate a ball like a fur ball that also has bones inside the fur and so in Miss Wester's class and other teachers classes at Gardner Newman Middle School the students worked together to dissect the, the, uh, the rat pellet <laughs> I mean the owl pellet and then they had to put together the skeleton of the animal that the owl had ingested and again here's an example of a rat that this particular owl had ingested and the kids got a big kick out of doing this activity. So they had to go pull that apart and then pull out the bones and this is what they found. That's exactly right. Okay. And not only did they find the bones, they then had to use skeleton outlines to try to determine what the animal was. Okay. And so here's an example of the animal. Okay. Our art club and our art classes have been working on student self-portraits. And I wanted to share some of them because our, our art teacher, Ms. Tanisha, Tanancia Quick, is quite good. And Ms. Quick uh, and I selected some portraits that the students have done. This is a self-portrait of Tanquana Holloway. I'll just share several of those. Okay. Thank you, Tina. Sure. Jacqueline Ross. He's a seventh grader. I love okay. this one. <laughs> creative. It's creative and colorful. Yes, they all are. Shakira Brewer did this self-portrait. I love the colors in the hair. <laughs> Talented students. Very. And, and here's one from seventh grader Elizabeth Kaplan. So the students who also have art in elementary school can come on to Gardner Newman Middle School and also continue with their art instruction. Okay. And you also have a chorus program, is that true? We do have a chorus program. Um, in fact, I'm hoping that they'll be able to share some at the end of this production. Um, our chorus program, under the direction of Miss India Jones, uh, has done a wonderful job of um, using drama and music 
to do lots of various productions throughout the year, including Annie Jr., which they did at Christmas time. Okay. So it's really great. We are so excited. Thank you for sharing that information, and thank you for watching. We'll take a short break right now, and when we return, we will hear from the Garner Newman Middle School Chorus. So stay tuned. We have a special treat for you. What an amazing performance by Garner Newman Middle School Chorus. With me right now is Taylor Jones. And Taylor, I understand that you are a participant in the chorus. What grade are you in? I'm in eighth grade. Okay, and tell me why you enjoy the chorus. I enjoy chorus because not only do we get to have fun and do many performances, but we also get the opportunity to learn and just having that opportunity is amazing because a lot of the budget cuts and everything's been going around and our school's really lucky and fortunate to have the program. Here. Well, you all did a wonderful job and I believe that was the Garner Newman Creed, was that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so tell me a little bit about what you've learned since you participated in chorus. Well, we've had many just especially with drama. We've had many students interacting with each other, getting over their nervousness or embarrassment and really getting out there and showing everybody who they are and what they can do. And like in our last performance, Annie, I had the opportunity to be the main character of Annie and it was a blast. We had a really good time. Okay, and I understand that you're planning to participate at the high school level in the chorus program. Is that true? Yes, ma'am. Okay, well, I wish you the absolute best. And as you all prepare for a second number, you can go back and join the chorus. And to you, our wonderful audience who have been watching, this is Garner Newman Middle School Chorus Program. And they will bring you a second number. The soloist for this particular uh, song is Simmerly Hardage, Simmerly Hardage, and she's accompanied by Aaron Lee.
Okay, Miss Ann Cook, principal of Garner Newman Middle School. Who do we have joining us? This is our yeah. chorus and drama teacher, Miss India Jones, who is one of the best chorus teachers I've ever had the pleasure of working with. And this is her bel canto choir behind us. And that was, what was that performance? Tell us a little that bit about that. That was a um, spiritual called Didn't My Lord Deliver Daniel? And it was absolutely amazing. I was blown away, and I know that you were too, our viewing audience. And would you like to close out with any words about the chorus program? Sure. This is actually a small selected group called Bel Canto, which in Italian means beautiful music, and they have worked very hard. We have a 30-minute class period each day that we work through things, and the song you just heard, actually, they learned in one 30-minute session, wow. and they are very, very, very talented, and I could not have a better group, as well as all of my other chorus classes as well, 6th through 8th grade. They are just phenomenal, and I don't think people understand exactly how much talent middle schoolers really do have. And I echo that. Congratulations to you all. Thank you for joining the show today. Thank you, Ms. Cook, thank and you. thank you, our viewing audience. Uh, again, you're watching Spotlight on Education, and until next time, make it a great day.